Um, morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, morning, Your Excellency, as we say in uh, Palau Ali. Um, I'd like to thank Jennifer and everybody here at Google for uh, putting this on, hosting it, and inviting me. It's a long way from Palau to Southern California. It's about on the opposite side of the earth, pretty much. Um, and today, uh, I'm going to talk about Palau and uh, our efforts to create what we call the Palau National Marine Sanctuary. Um, I'm not sure how many people have been to Palau. I know Barbara has. Uh, yeah, Barbara, okay. how's it going? Um, but uh, we are the westernmost island nation in the Micronesian region. Uh, Palau is made up of over 300 volcanic, uh, raised limestone, and atoll islands. And our population hovers at around 17 to 20,000 people, making Palau um, pretty much one of the smallest countries in the world, both in population and in land mass. So there in itself presents a huge amount of challenges for marine domain areas. Um, like, all, like all people in the Pacific, uh, we're historically connected to the ocean, and the ocean has always been part of our daily lives. And to this day, we depend heavily on the ocean for our economy, our food, our security, and our identity as Pacific Islanders. And I'm sure your, I'm sure your Excellency can relate to that. Um, because of this, the idea of conservation is not new to us. Uh, we, in fact, we have a tradition called the Bur in Palau, which the president of Palau has, has spoken on. And it's a type of moratorium imposed on an area once our leaders had deemed that it was becoming depleted of its resources too quickly. And it's a tradition that dates back pre-contact. Um, when village chiefs declared a bull on an area, no one was allowed to fish there until uh, the bull was lifted. And the practice continues to this day, in fact. And you can see certain areas uh, when, when there's a bull that put a, a certain marker on that area, no one's allowed to fish there. And it's not enforced by our regulatory structure, it's just really just a tradition right there. Um, this practice continues and it's become the basis of uh, many modern conservation initiatives in Palau, like uh, the world's first shark sanctuary and the Micronesia Challenge, which commits Palau and its Micronesian neighbors to effectively conserve at least 30% of our marine and 20% of our terrestrial resources by 2020. And uh, we're proud to say that we have accomplished that uh, last year, in fact. Um, as you can see, the practice of conservation and managing uh, sustainable marine ecosystems are not new to Palau. And so the declaration by our president last year at, in New York to create a comprehensive national marine sanctuary encompassing Palau's entire exclusive economic zone, 200 miles out, was just the next logical step for our country. And I believe everyone here would agree that uh, as a whole, not including Iceland, the ocean's resources are not being used in a sustainable manner. Um, areas where the marine life are protected, like the Coral Sea in Australia and the Phoenix Islands in Kiribati, and the uh, Papa Hanao Mokuakea, Marine National Monument are few and far between. And for the most part, advances in technology have allowed industrial commercial fishing operations to increase their harvest of pelagic and nearshore species to a level that scientists have, uh, science have shown that is, is not sustainable. And ultimately, it's uh, small island states like Palau that, that really pay the price. And, you know, firsthand, trust me, we notice the depletion in fish stocks. Uh, we're a small community. Many of our, <coughs> our uh, citizens are fishermen. Um, I myself have grown up in Palau fishing there all my life, and I've noticed a severe decline in uh, nearshore and pelagic fish stocks just in the past five or <coughs> six years. And it's, it's something that's it's actually really scary when you see it firsthand. And really, the benefits of large-scale commercial fishing in Palau are minimal. Um, there are a minute fraction of the billions of dollars made annually by the foreign commercial fin fishing industry. And our president's decision to move away from commercial fishing and create the sanctuary is not Palau's attempt to be green or jump on the conservation bandwagon. Not that that's a bad thing, but um, it's really 
what we need to do to ensure that there'll be a functional marine ecosystem for our children and our grandchildren. And it's, as a small nation, it's just one of the few things that we can do, but we're trying. As our president likes to say, our future lies in tourism, not too much. Um, we're not trying to push that agenda on any other Pacific country or any country. In fact, it's just what <coughs> can work for us, we believe. The economic benefit from a well-protected, healthy marine ecosystem, I think, is worth much more in the long run than the price of the <coughs> We believe we can do without that revenue if we focus on ecotourism and uh, sustainable recreational uh, fishing techniques as well as other environmentally friendly tourism activities. But creating a national marine sanctuary of over 600,000 square kilometers, an area roughly the size of France, is not an easy task. It doesn't happen overnight. And um, I'm sure everybody would agree that uh, the many steps that we need to take to realize that goal of comprehensive marine sanctuary allow. And there will be a transition period while we phase out existing fishing licenses with these large-scale companies. They followed the declaration by President Remengsel last year to create the Marine Sanctuary, we've come to realize that there are three key components to achieving this goal. And the first is we, got, we must find a, a resource, a funding resource, to replace <coughs> the revenue lost when we move away from commercial fishing. And right now, that, um, that dollar amount annually is approximately four to five million dollars. It's really a drop in the bucket compared to what those companies are making out of Palau, which is, I think is estimated about four to five billion dollars per year. It's, it's uh, <coughs> pretty grotesque, actually. Um, we do have existing agreements with the US, Japan, and uh, several other countries, as, as well as a small scale long lining operation in Palau that we are planning on discontinuing once those out of their license agreements. Um, and we're looking for partners in both the public and private arena to assist, in, assist us in replacing that revenue for the short term until we can enhance our tourism and ecotourism uh, industry until, uh, so we can replace that revenue annually. I think we're, the estimates were probably about three to four years. Um, and we do have NGOs doing the financial analysis of that, uh, that project. Um, we are working with uh, NGOs like the Pew Charitable Trusts, the Nature Conservancy, and Conservation International, as well as uh, private contributors um, to try and find a replacement for that lost revenue. Um, like I said, Palau is already a, a shark sanctuary. We are now a UNESCO World Heritage Site and enlisted as one of the top 10 ethical tourist destinations in the world. And once again, we've been ranked as the number one scuba diving destination by many scuba diving magazines. And it just makes sense to take that next step and uh, commit to a sustainable ecotourism based economy by creating this marine sanctuary. Uh, like I said, our future doesn't go down that path towards high industry commercial fishing. It's, it's, it's leading towards tourism and we realize that. Um, the second key aspect to ensuring the success of this uh, National Marine Sanctuary is we must enhance our surveillance and enforcement capacity. And that's why we're here today. Um, the last thing we want to do is pass a law declaring all Palauan waters a marine sanctuary and not have the legal framework or the capacity to back that up. It's, it, it just won't work. Um, and a recent assessment of our monitoring and control surveillance capacity has shown that we are severely lacking in manpower, technology, training, and most of all, funding to create that capacity to enforce and surveil our, our waters. Um, we do have existing assets. Uh, we have a single <coughs> patrol boat, which is capable of controlling our waters, but it's it's not enough. 600,000 square kilometers is a large swath of ocean. Uh, we do work with the US to, um, which supplies us the AIS and the VMS data. But everybody here knows that that only works when 
those systems are on. And uh, that only works when boats are compliant. The thing about Palau is we're situated in an area that's really a hot spot for IUU. It's, um, we're only about 300, 400 miles away from Indonesia, the Philippines, areas where everybody knows that there are impoverished communities that <coughs> have really nothing to lose, and they send small IUU vessels that are not compliant with AIS and VMS systems, and they target areas in Palau that are amazing, pristine marine ecosystems, and they just break them. These areas. It's, it's actually pretty sad. And, um, but you know, we're happy to say that there is support from larger stakeholders in the Pacific. Uh, recently, Japan, through the Nippon Foundation and the Sasakawa Foundation, uh, have committed to supply Palau with an additional nearshore patrol boat and to construct a marine uh, enforcement training center, which will be a regional training center, so we can uh, create the capacity to train our own people these systems and we don't have to depend so heavily on, on foreign nations and organizations. But we also do have a ship rider agreement with the US. Um, Palauan patrol officers are allowed to ride on Coast Guard and, and Navy vessels when they're in the, in the area. Uh, that definitely helps and several IUU vessels have been captured using this, this technique. Um, Stopping illegal fishing in our waters is definitely a tall order, but we believe that the best hope in making this sanctuary a success is by enhancing our current capacity. We, we do have systems that are in place, however <coughs> underfunded and undermanned, that we need to start with as a basis. And then what we'll do is we'll utilize the latest technology, that's why we're here now, uh, to monitor and patrol our waters. These uh, technological advances in radar, satellite imagery, um, sonar, as well as unmanned <coughs> vehicles, both aerial and aquatic, are being assessed for their potential role in a comprehensive enforcement package, uh, like our previous presenter had in, in Portugal. So I was looking at that, I was, I was amazed. Uh, and it's, it's, it's basically what we need to enforce our waters. And, and that's why I, I so appreciate your invitation today. And, and being out in Palau, it's, it's very remote. We don't have access to all this, this great information and, and events like this, it's very helpful. Um, but yeah, we are working with, uh, with Pew to come up with that enforcement package. Um, we're, also, we're also working with Pacific Command, US Pacific Command, to see how they can contribute. We do have a uh, Marine Domain Awareness Working Group, and um, we meet uh, monthly, and, and we're coming up with, like I said, a strategic plan on how we can enforce our waters. Um, the third key uh, to successfully implementing our marine sanctuary is to ensure that our own people are completely informed on all the issues associated with any commercial fishing in Palau. And really, that's. That's on us. That's uh, that's and it's key to making this a success because we can't go out and lobby the world <coughs> when we don't have the support at home. Um, and that all depends on information. Like all large initiatives uh, that that are proposed, there are rumors that and misinformation that, are, that gets around in our community. And uh, like President Grimson said, small villages news travels quickly and it might not always be the correct news. Um, we need to let our people know that we are not banning fishing. We come from a country of fishermen. That is our main source of protein, our way of life. We don't, this, this marine sanctuary <coughs> is not gonna end all fishing in Palau. In fact, what we want to do is we want to focus on artisanal and subsistence-based fishing so we can support our community. It's our, our, our food security and it's what we need to create this robust tourism industry that we're, we're talking about. We need to feed these tourists something. <laughs> and hopefully it'll be fish that uh, still exist in our waters. So um, that's, that's, a, that's a tall task and, and we're up to it. We're, 
we have uh, community-based information programs trying to inform everybody that this, uh, at the end of the day, what we need to do is, is we need to let the people know that our efforts will only have positive impacts on the environment and our revenue stream and the community in life and allow. So we get support at home and then we go out to the world and say, you know what, this is what we're trying to do. Um, please help. We're, we only have 20,000 people in the entire country. Yeah, there might be more people on this campus right now than in the entire country of Palau. So it's, it's, a, it's a tall order. But, um, you know, I must admit that when I first heard the president's plan to ban all commercial fishing in Palau, I was skeptical. Uh, I think a lot of people were. And, and it's interesting to see who was and who wasn't. And some of the people you, who you would think would be on board were the, the ones who were telling us that it couldn't be done, basically. It was, it was, a, it was an eye-opener. Um, never before has a country created a total national marine sanctuary with its entire waters. I believe this is a first. It may not be the largest. It's quite large, but I think it's, it's, it's a first in that aspect. Um, what I've come to realize, though, that this idea, this plan, is not something new. Uh, like I said before, it's not a publicity stunt. Basically, this is a country, its people, and a leader using what we know, using our tradition, using the bull. To th this bull was created generations ago, and it was created to ensure a sustainable future. What we're doing now, what the president's declaring, this this bull on all our territorial waters. We're doing it so that there'll be fish for our children and our generations to come. So thank you everybody that's just a quick overview.